We'll just see that in a few minutes. Got another one here. Uh, beef Wellington, popular one out there. Omela, thanks very much for your Beef Wellington recipe. Uh, we'll be showing you all of these recipes a little later on. And uh, Luluk also sent in a, a recipe of a delicious soup. So all those are more to come in just a little while, but time is running out to get your entries in, so don't delay, because this is your chance to shine on the one and only Studio One. Now this week, we're taking a look at cosmetic surgery and meeting some of Dubai's most highly regarded surgeons. Indeed we are, and Dr. Edmund Khoury is a facial cosmetic surgeon at the American Academy Cosmetic Surgery Hospital, who has performed over 2,000 facelifts during his career. And he's here to tell us more about facial rejuvenation. Doc, thanks very much for being with us. No, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for coming on. And, and just ex explaining more about the fascinating side of uh, cosmetic surgery and facial rejuvenation. Now, facelifts. I've got yeah. my own little ideas of what a facelift is, but I'm sure that the surgery, the procedures have advanced so quickly in the last couple of years. Where are we at now with facial rejuvenation? It, it's, it's advanced drastically and the thing is, this is not your grandmother's facelift anymore. Where you you, you think of it, I mean, the moment you the moment you, you you say facelift, everybody thinks of black and blue, swollen like a pumpkin, and and taking three weeks to recover. Um, we could do it these days very safely under local, we'll do like a two-hour surgery, and get the same results as what typically a lot of people do in six hours, but then also cut the cut the um, um, healing time down from three weeks down to a week and that has to do a lot with the technology that's out there. So right. the procedure time has come down, the healing time has come down, it's becoming a lot more faster process. And accessible too. And yeah. accessible, yeah. So, so how long is the healing process? Um, w w in the way I do the facelifts, um, I use either a combination of lasers or vasers. And a vasor is actually play on words, but a, a vasor is the ultrasound assisted technology mm -hmm. where before you start the facelift, that will help the surgeon perform the surgery quicker, but it will also help with cut down on the amount of bleeding and then the recovery time, because if you don't bleed as much during surgery, you're not going to swell as much, you're not going to bruise as much, and that's where you take the three-week healing period and cut it down to a week. And, and, and so that helps tremendously. So it's all about the technology. In addition to that, you also add as part of the result a little sure. shrink wrap effect to the, to the result after you you know, pull somebody, so. You've talked about, about those results. Uh, you've brought in a couple of images of before and afters, which we'll have a look on, yeah. the, uh, on the screen here uh, in the studio. And maybe you can talk us through a couple of those. So let's have a quick look at a picture of before, the eyes. These are the eyes. Um, the, the eyes have the connotation of looking tired more so than aging. And this is a more, this is, a, I think, I, in the States I do a lot more facelifts than eyes. Here I, I think I do more eyes than facelifts. Really? Um, the, the Mediterranean, the, the Arab um, mm. trait is we, we usually have baggy eyes and sure. stuff, and so that lends itself to it. So I, I get a lot of uh, here eyes in, at the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery Hospital, and it gives the connotation of looking tired. And so once you, you freshen up the eyes, you just look, you know, either your normal self or just fresher. You mm -hmm. stop getting the comments of looking tired or old. <laughs> no, I mean. Uh, t tired or just beat up. Sure. Right. Aging has to do mostly with the lower face. Yeah, because the, the eye lift would be different than a traditional exactly. facelift. Exactly, and that's the thing. A lot of people, when they think about a facelift, think about they're having the whole face done, mm -hmm. which in reality is not true. You, you have to split it up into a brow, mm -hmm. eyes, and lower face. Yeah. And like this is a picture of a lady who had a lower facelift. Some people consider this a mini lift, but when, when I talk about facelifts, I'm just talking about the lower face, the jawline and the neck. Right. And signs of aging include the jowls. It blunts the definition to the jawline, which is a sign of youthfulness. And then once you start to get the laxity in the neck, that also just, you know, is a more of a characteristic of yeah. aging. And so the goal of a facelift is to define the jawline, define the neck, and those are signs of youthfulness. And, and in the sure. process, you, you, you take care of the wrinkles and right. you know, improve the polish, okay. so to speak. You mentioned a little earlier um, well, you showed us a picture yeah. of a, a, a man and a woman uh -huh. as well. Now, traditionally, women have been those most associated with facelifts. That's true. Uh, is that still the case? It, it still is the case, but the men are catching up. Yeah. And, and, and the reason I think men were lagging behind is, uh, is it had to do more with recovery. Right. When, when it comes, let's say, to a facelift, because of our beards, we have more blood supply to our face. And that usually translated to more bruising and, 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 and swelling in the post-op 
period. And so t tell, tell them, you know, men can't take three weeks off from work. It, well, and women, you know, can't yeah. either. But I mean, but the thing is, a woman has more concealers to at her disposal, long hair, mm, uh, right. makeup. I mean, for men, uh, not everybody's like Aerosmith who could drape their hair <laughs> down and, 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 nobody, try, and, huh? and the rockers to, you know, <laughs> to put makeup on. But when you cut it down and you make it more, uh, more, um, a quicker healing period, then it becomes more accessible to mm -hmm. men. And that's what I'm seeing. Um, like back home, I, I think I have the biggest male facelift practice really? in, in, in Denver. And you know, here, here, actually, I'm, I see a lot of men who come for their eyes, you know, right, again, right. the bags and the tired yeah. look. Well, with all this advanced technology, clearly there's been an increase in the amount of uh, facial rejuvenation yes. surgeries you've done. What, what kind of increase have you seen in the past few years? Uh, it, I think it's all led by technology. This is the same facelift that we've had for, for decades, mm -hmm. but when you introduce something new and you make it more... Um, not user friendly, but like I said, you, you, you improve the healing period. More then accessible. The, the, more accessible. Mm -hmm. Then you get you get a big rush for it. I mean, everybody wants the newest and and, and best thing. But this is one of the true occasions where the the, the newest thing is truly lived up to its to, to what it is, yeah. and and, and it's, it's it's been a thrill to go through it. So one final question from me. Um, obviously, huge advances in 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 modern medicine. Huge advances in procedures. But if you have a facelift, if you have a procedure like mm -hmm. this, do you have to refresh it further on down the yeah. line? Yeah, my most one, one of my most common questions is how long is this going to last? Yeah. And <laughs> if I told you ten years, it doesn't mean you wake up in ten years and everything <laughs> fell overnight. <laughs> and so, so you, you, you're you're like a freight train that's going down. You're just taking the train and putting it back down the track, and you're going to continue to roll down. The way I like my patients to view this is. If you came in for the facelift, you came in complaining about certain issues, the jowls, the neck. And so in 10 years on average, you're going to complain of the same things again. And then you, you know, you could either decide to do a touch up again mm -hmm. or just, you know, at that point, just, you know, yeah. right. continue with it. So, yeah. And in addition to improving your physical looks, I'm sure it gives you a good boost of confidence. Yeah. Too. Oh, it does. <laughs> it does. Hey, listen, uh, the website address, if you'd like to find out more, aacsh.com. Uh, and, of course, uh, the phone number is on the screen at the moment as well. Uh, Dr. Edmund Curry, double board certified. Thank you very much hey, indeed for, for being with us, and we'll you. certainly speak to you soon. All the yep. best. Thanks. Coming up after the break, we go dining in the dark. Uh, and we've got all the hot gossip, including an interview with, get this, Paris Hilton, no less. We'll be right back. Uh, welcome back to Studio One. And no, your eyes are not deceiving you. And no, Sabah's not going through a feng shui moment. <laughs> and we've had to change or anything like that. But uh, we have...